I am an academic financial genius. I can tell you how to invest optimally using 21st century asset pricing theory. Great news. I love to do things optimally. What is your theory? That expected investment returns are a positive linear function of risk. Just choose what level of risk and expected return from the security market line that you want, and lever your diversified portfolio accordingly. Sure, but what is risk? It is uncertainty we do not like. Yes. Both Shakespeare and the Bible mentioned diversification to mitigate this risk. But what about the risk left over, that we cannot diversify? It is undiversifiable risk, such as from wars and recessions, and these generate risk premiums. I do not like those. I'm glad I get a premium for holding such risks. Everyone feels pretty much the same, which is why you get a premium for it. Otherwise, no one would take risk. That makes perfect sense. So how should I invest? You should invest in a broadly diversified portfolio, leveraging your investment based on your risk preferences. Do people invest that way? No, most people are massively under-diversified and have no idea what the risk-return trade-off is, and try to outguess the market. So, the theory does not work. The theory still works because the effects of the theory are true. It is the as-if theory. Excellent. I like as-if theories. So, more volatile stocks have higher returns than low-volatility stocks? No, actually, the reverse. Is not volatility risk? Obviously not, as returns are not higher for these companies. We look instead at covariances embodied in betas. So high beta stocks have higher returns than low beta stocks? No, actually the reverse. Okay, what about alternative measures of risk, like the probability of default? No, these risk measures show flat, if not inverse relations between risk and average returns. WTF. In what way are risky firms risky? This makes as much sense as postmodern deconstructionism. You are wrong. Stocks are a great example of risk. Small cap and value stocks have higher returns, because they are riskier. In what way are they riskier, if not in volatility or beta? They have higher returns. Isn't that backwards? What is risk, other than what is correlated with higher returns? If investors like lottery ticket type assets like highly volatile stocks, in what way are they risk averse? They do not like volatility, they just like really high returns. We have a theory for that, skew-loving preferences. Well, really high returns and volatility go together, so which preference dominates? Within stocks, skew-loving dominates, but between stocks and bonds, risk aversion dominates. A theory is a useless tautology unless the offsetting effects of risk aversion and the positive skew preference can be estimated from something other than the historical returns they are used to explain. Our theory is demonstrated empirically by the fact that aggregate equity returns have been 5% greater than money market returns in the 20th century for the US. I presume you adjusted the equity return for geometric averaging, survivorship bias, taxes, adverse net capital inflows to the market and transaction costs. One rarely does as well as raw indices, you know. Of course. Just never all at the same time, because that would get rid of our most conspicuous supporting data point. So, you tendentiously avoid adjustments to your lonely supporting data point and say your theory works. It does not work with inequities, or across currencies, commodities, most bonds, and gambling. Why do you really think it works? Because it should work. You should have to take risk to generate a higher return. People who got rich did take a lot of risk. You seem to have made a logical mistake. Just because it takes risk to become rich, does not imply risk taking has a higher expected return. That cannot be true. Economists' fundamental conception of utility as an increasing but concave function of wealth is a necessary and sufficient condition for the existence of a risk premium. But then where is this omnipresent missing risk premium if not in the CAPM? That is not important. The CAPM led to stochastic risk factors that show it is the correlation with the marginal utility of the representative agent that matters, just like in the CAPM but you replace the market with the marginal utility of the representative investor. How do I measure that? We do not know yet. Just remember. Finance is the only part of economics that works. Just look at derivative modeling. Do they use risk premiums? No.
I am a financial genius.